Please welcome Eric Katenkamp, Director of Information Technology for Public Supermarkets. Good morning. So uh, you probably think it's a little bit unlikely to hear from a supermarket guy at something like this. But uh, I wanted to start off by telling you just a little bit about myself. I actually started off here. My career started here at Kennedy Space Center uh, about 19 years ago, believe it or not. And uh, I worked in a group called RTSOE2. I don't know if that means anything anymore to anybody, but it was the uh, industrial and safety, or industrial and payload um, safety processing group. And um, it was a great experience, um, but I did, uh, I did move on after a couple years and, uh, and went to Publix, where I've now been for 17 years. And, um, I've worked in a lot of different uh, parts of the, of the company, but I'm currently run uh, part of the information technology department. And, uh, and you may wonder what kind of innovation we do uh, there, but there's actually a lot more than you might expect. And I spoke here about a year ago uh, at a systems engineering um, graduation ceremony and talked about some of the innovative things we're doing. And a lot of things that I've been able to do as an engineer uh, moving into the supermarket industry is bring a lot of the higher mathematics um, and technology to how we replenish product, how we forecast sales demand, uh, how we decide what products go on what shelves, what shelf to put them on, uh, what mix of products to put in each store how we get product from California to Florida, and how we move product from our warehouses to our stores, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so there's a lot of uh, optimization logic and things that we've employed, and as computing power has gotten more powerful, we're able to crunch uh, tens and hundreds of millions of calculations so that we can get product to the right place at the right time uh, in the right quantities. So I actually was gonna take a little bit of a, of a different slant today and talk more from an organizational standpoint, um, how we do uh, collaboration. And I understand that collaboration was a big part of the theme today as well. And I called this the collaboration myth, and I'm gonna talk just some from my own experience of what has worked and what hasn't worked. I'm gonna tell a little bit of a story about where our information systems department was and where it is now from an organizational standpoint. And we've made some pretty significant changes to be more effective. Um, so real quick on Publix, I'm sure most everybody here has been to Publix, but we have 1,050 stores now in five, uh, five states across the southeastern United States. And we have about 28 warehouses and 10 manufacturing plants. So it's actually a pretty complex operation, about 40,000 items in each store. So orchestrating that whole supply chain and that network is not a straightforward process by any stretch. And we believe we're on the leading edge of being able to like I said, get product in the right place at the right time. The myth that I wanted to talk about that I've seen and experienced is that if you put a bunch of really smart people together and give them an objective, you're gonna get great results and they're gonna succeed. Um, that is not a given, and I think everybody would probably agree with that, but I see organizational structures get set up in a way that kind of assumes that this is true. And I wanna go back to when I joined the information systems group there at Publix, how we were structured and the type of issues we had and how we solved it. So when I got there, we had a fairly traditional matrix type project structure. And I'm sure most people in here are familiar with that kind of organizational structure where you have functional groups of like, um, like skilled people with a manager that typically has that skill too and those folks in those functional departments are allocated out to projects. And I just show the projects kind of along the side just to depict it. So you got functional groups going up and down. In our case, it was process analysis and system requirements and design and database and architecture. And I know here at NASA, those would be different things. And then we have various projects. And so these folks would be allocated out to the projects and a project manager would lead the work, whether it was an innovative type, uh, an innovation type uh, solution, a delivery of a particular project or solution. And what we found is that this was highly ineffective. It was very slow. Uh, and I'll, I'll just talk about a number of the specific issues that we 
uh, encountered. And I know this is kind of conventional wisdom, and it's kind of an engineering mindset, right, that I compartmentalize the like resources and then I allocate them out to projects to deliver results. But the, some of the key issues we saw uh, in this environment included, first of all, the managers of these functional groups oftentimes are not engaged in the projects. They might have 20 or 25 people and they naturally gravitate toward being what I call a resource manager, something I have, sorry, I have no, no liking or desire to be, someone that just kind of manages people and pushes paper around and so on. And we found that they were not deeply engaged with the customer, the end result of whatever project their folks were allocated to. And as a result, they weren't really contributing to the ultimate delivery of the solutions that were being, uh, being worked on. Another issue is you have a natural problem here where you have people that have kind of divided loyalty or you have uh, people who report up through one manager but they have some temporary allegiance to the project manager or the person that's um, kind of leading the particular effort they're assigned to. And again, that happens a lot, but in my experience, preventing that to the degree possible uh, is optimal. The other problem we, saw, we would have here is that a lot of conflicts arise. So you can have competing objectives in this structure where uh, you have a particular manager, a particular person from one of the functional silos that has a very strong opinion about something that should happen on the project that may contradict someone else on the project and possibly contradict what the overall project manager uh, has as their mission. And the problem is oftentimes that project manager role has very little authority. And so resolving these types of conflicts oftentimes has to go way up high in the organization and is painfully slow. Meetings, prep for meetings, sometimes getting on schedules a month out, and the decision-making process is just incredibly slow in this environment. And so we came to a point where we were just overly frustrated with our inability to get work done and make decisions toward the things we were trying to achieve. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what we did about this. So, and, and this is actually, I have found in talking to other companies, it's actually quite rare in an IT organization today. And what we did is we went from this matrix structure to more of what we call a line of business structure, where teams were defined as more permanent structures. So we took these managers, we basically got rid of the project manager role altogether and we got rid of the functional manager role altogether. And we define these roles called line of business managers. And what's neat about this role is it's an individual who has overall accountability to a particular business area or to a customer, but they also directly manage the resources, pay, performance reviews, career planning, and so on. And it allows that person to balance supply and demand and to be totally accountable to the customer and have the authority and the autonomy to make the decisions that need to be made quickly. And that person also lives with the results, balancing short-term and long-term. For example, immediate project delivery versus um, helping people grow and go to conferences and learn and so on, trying to balance that short-term and long-term. That individual owns both of those, as opposed to the previous structure, it was constant conflict between the resource manager trying to, trying to grow their people and the project that's trying to deliver and actually get results. And so what we have found is that this structure is extremely fast, it's extremely effective, and we have grouped within these line of business teams cross-functional people that have all the skills needed to, in our case, deliver information technology solutions, and there's a manager in place that can make the decisions and drive the results. And so the projects go more up and down. The projects are not pool, uh, executed by pools of people from different structures. They all report to the same manager. And if we get a new initiative or a new business area to support, we create another permanent structure with a manager, permanent in quotes, nothing's permanent in this world, but a manager who has people actually reporting up to them directly so that they can be accountable to the customer and own the resources. So I was actually gonna talk about kind of an analogy of how we run our stores, but I was thinking more about, you know, there's a continuum of types of work here, and you might be saying to yourself, that sounds fine for an operational execution environment, but in a project or innovation type environment, it doesn't make sense. And, and I was thinking about kind of this continuum of work types. 
with one extreme being kind of wartime military where there's no room for consensus building, there's no room for negotiation and so on. It's a straight chain of command, command and control structure that's required to make decisions for obvious reasons. All the way to the other extreme, which would be more like a think tank where folks are there contributing, it's, it's, it's more loose decision making, uh, rapid decision making maybe isn't as critical and so on. But I would argue that what I've seen is that org structures gravitate more toward the think tank side, too far to the think tank side, and less toward the good old-fashioned command and control structure. And it's like somewhere about 15 years ago, that idea of chain of command and command and control structure became like a, like a bad word. Like, you know, what was talked about was self-directed work teams and things like that, not traditional command and control structures. My experience has been that good old-fashioned Line of, uh, line of command org structures work best. Now, what's critical in this role, in this structure, is that line of business manager. You have to find people that have very good mix of skills to run a cross-functional organization and be accountable to a customer and so on. The first thing is they've got to have technical skills, um, which means they've gone deep. That's what we call it. They've gone deep once into something and they really understand technology and the complexity of technology. They obviously need business skills, project management skills, and leadership management and people skills. And I'll admit, it's tough to find people that have that complete package. And we actually use kind of a pie chart where we classify everybody and we say, one, you know, one person has two pieces of the pie, another person has three pieces of the pie. We want a lot of people, a lot of managers that have all four pieces of that pie that can actually run teams from end to end. The other thing I'll add in there is facilitation skills. We obviously are dealing with professionals, and so this command and, and uh, control type structure has to be there for decision making and expediency, but the reality is with professionals, folks have to be heard. And so it's important that the manager also has the capability to get input from everybody and facilitate discussions, but at the end of the day still has to make the decisions and do it in a rapid manner. And I'm just going to close with this concept called work, and I'll tell you just a, just a little bit about our president at Publix. President of Publix of a multi-billion dollar organization, has a high school education. He's one of the most brilliant people I know. And he often talks about this concept of work, and he has this book actually uh, sitting in his lobby. And he often talks, it's a, it's a National Geographic book that has pictures of all types of work like this. I'm not even sure exactly what those folks are doing. But the, um, the concept is whether someone is sweeping a floor in the store or building an optimization algorithm, at the end of the day, everybody's trying to produce output. Everybody's trying to do work. And I've seen organizational structures get too focused on thinking, conceptualizing, and so on. And at the end of the day, we all have to have output. We all have to have work and it needs to be done. And so I would just suggest, as I've had to do myself, next time a big project or endeavor comes up and you're figuring out how to structure it, at least consider building an actual structure with a command and control environment where there's a manager that's ultimately accountable and the team reports them directly as opposed to a matrix environment where folks are there, the project manager doesn't have a lot of authority, and you're spending weeks and months trying to resolve conflict. And I know there are lots of models in between, but the challenge I would offer and something I've had to do is just to, to think about structuring work kind of the good old fashioned way where somebody's in charge as opposed to these loose structures that in my experience have been significantly less effective. Thank you very much.